This how to win the millionaire maker edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by mybookie.ag. Sports are back and my bookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. Plus deposit this week and get a free $10 NBA future bet. That's mybookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win and get paid. We're also brought to you by the leaders in daily fantasy, DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code SGP to get a free shot at millions of dollars up for grabs this week with your first deposit. That's promo code SGP to get a free shot at millions of dollars with your first deposit only at DraftKings. Finally, we're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paperhead providers and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking that money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money Kramer. What's happening, Cream Dog? Football. You know, when I see the uh, the great Scott Tolzien looking over your shoulder. Yes. It's gotta just bring back nightmares. Well, nightmares. It's it's bittersweet because, as we know, I came in second place in the Millionaire Maker. I wasn't aware, but I, know. it was a, it was a great run. Some listeners may not know that. Maybe they're new to the podcast. Yeah. We are getting new listeners every day. People are spreading the word. We're getting a lot of people from our Sims checking us out. But yes, I was sitting on a million dollars for good a uh, couple hours there, and then I was knocked off first place, down to second place when Scott Tolzien threw his second pick six. Of the of the game and uh, very limited career by Scott Tolzien. I think he's one of the only guys in NFL history to throw more pick sixes than touchdowns in an F- NFL season because he only started that one game yeah. that season. Whoa. Very very limited slate for you two. I think he's actually the only guy in NFL history to throw more pick sixes than touchdowns in a single season. That's an impressive stat, right? You accounted for more touchdowns for your opponent than your own team. It's something that Jamison went. Jamison Winston would only dream of doing. He only threw uh, six pick sixes, 30 actual touchdowns. We're talking DFS. We're talking fantasy, and we're going to be joined later by Adam Levitan of Establish the Run co-founder. He put out this cool article, kind of crunching the numbers, laying out the data. You know all the stuff you love, Sean. Uh, data I, analytics. Again, I like analysis. I like knowing the data and then shoving the data in the locker and relying on my gut instinct. Okay. So I like to. I awareness. Like to, I, you like data awareness. Yes. But at the end of the day, that data is going to be digested into your stomach bile and acid and your gut is going to produce an outcome. Exactly. Mm, sounds much a like, lot like taking a shit. <laughs> much like uh, my regular stomach. Yes, I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to eat all this content, all this data, process it in my stomach yep. and digest yep. a uh, a winning turd that I'm going to put out. What is it there. they say about polishing a turd? <laughs> You can only polish it so much. Of course, mybookie.ag sports are back. The NBA is back. We just put out our NBA's back gambling podcast. Went through all our week one NBA picks for the first weekend. Even threw out a uh, talked a little DFS, but make sure you check that out. Mybookie.ag promo code SGP. They're now offering a 100% deposit bonus. Now is the time. Load up for football coming. NBA. I mean, every day we're walking it. This bubble is going to, it's not exactly March madness, but I think it kind of has, it has the chances to have some March madness feel where the back to back to back games. I mean, you look at Friday's slate and yeah, they have a couple courts, but they're really, the schedule is, is pretty crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a wet dream. If you like to bet live wager. And I think for, for like we highlighted on that episode, if you want to be responsible Get your DFS lineups, kind of play some funky DFS lineups, but really maybe head over to establish the run and check out what they're offering from the, the basketball side. But really, pre game positions on spread totals, like you have to be really sure. If not, play the live action, right? Yeah, like, and, and my bookie's great about offering all those live lines. And I think we're going to figure out a lot as far as like game flow in the bubble, et cetera. But yeah, I mean, look at this slate Friday. Yeah, eleven thirty a.m. and this is West Coast time. Oh, is that time. too early? I don't uh, know. No, that's Morning perfect. basketball. Wake up, getting some basketball going. Eleven thirty a.m. Then two games going at one p.m. Yep. A three thirty game, a five p.m. game, a six p.m. game. It's kind of yeah. a elite eight style feel, and uh, all that gambling action you can get over at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP. Kramer, forgive me, uh, I could be wrong, but I don't know if we've ever played the audio 
from my, from right after I won 200 grand getting in second place in the millionaire maker have. a few years back, we recorded the video. Of course, there's a, a blog post. You can read all about it, but my buddy, Justin was filming and uh, rapid fire recap. But basically, even though I had all my players in the 10 AM game, then I got knocked out of first place. I was still sitting in second place, 200 grand and this millionaire maker, it's different for each one, but they actually had the Sunday night game going and I caught a real break because it was giants Cowboys. And I think a lot of people had Odell Beckham cause he was supposed to play. He was kind of a late scratch. And so I think a lot of people did have Beckham in their lineups and you know, you could still do a late swap there, but at that price point, you're not really finding another Odell Beckham at that price well, at the receiver position. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, to, to answer your question, no, I don't think we've have ever played this. And I, I was basically just watching the entire game, sweating out Jason Witten. It seemed like Jason Witten catches were the only, and there's 270,000 people in the contest. So you really, you can kind of look at who's behind you, yeah. but you really can't go through and figure out who's behind you. It seemed like Jason Witten was the guy that, uh, that was really kind of nipping at my heels and, and could potentially knock me off a of second and and really um, it's funny. I have me- I have like vivid memories. You know how like you, you, there's certain things that have happened in your past. You've still, I remember the moment uh, that you took over for, or at least you admitted you were in first place. Yes. Uh, when the defensive touch and touchdown happened at the end of the Eagles Redskins game. And that's a 10 AM game. That was a 10 AM game. I then remember later on um, when we were over at the Westgate, beautiful ballroom where you watch all the games where uh, we watched Scott Tolzien throw a second pick six over oh, a blackjack table, uh, to which you you screamed "fuck to- Scott Tolzien," <laughs> scaring a bunch of people. Sounds about right. Uh, and then later that night, I think we watched the Sunday night game at Caesars. It was, but p- probably I thought we ended up watching at least the second half was in the room when things got well, real. And then we went up to the room yeah, and we, Oh no, it. we were at the Westgate. I'm sorry. The entire time. Then we came back down after this video. And I remember you basically kind of came out of nowhere. We were myself and the person who filmed this video, Justin were gambling and you kind of slid over calmly and said, Hey, uh, what do you think about driving home right now? <laughs> hey, I uh, did. I did keep wanting to drive home because I, I was worried <laughs> somehow I was going to blow the 200 grand, even no, though it was your in the, Catholic Irish it, weird guilt. It was so, something bad. Like you can't have something that awesome no. happen All without, right. a, a, you know, the plane was going to go down, but the Cowboys <laughs> giants ended up being 19 to three. There was yeah. only one touchdown scored and it was, it was Jason Witten. So if someone had Witten getting a second touchdown or, or maybe Dak going off, but really it was a low scoring game. Eli didn't throw an inter uh, touchdown, only an interception. God bless Eli man. Yep. And I know we give him a lot of shit on the podcast, but class act, hell of a guy. And uh, here's the audio for me getting second place in the DraftKings Millionaire Maker. Before, <laughs> do I go on the two hundred fucking grand? Eat it, DraftKings. <laughs> Promo code SGP. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> How do you process this? Alright, let's go, let's walk. We gotta move. Uh, oh, you need an edible. <laughs> no, dude. <it's laughs> not, it doesn't feel real right now. I need I need like a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> 200 fucking grand! Oh man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. No way. <laughs> no way. Well, and leave it to the cameraman, AKA the bottomless pit to just like send in a uh, fresh belch of yeah. whatever meal he just ate. Yeah. I, I, um, I mean, I even remember when we went over uh, later that night, I think, or maybe uh, to, to meet up with some people and they're like, Whoa, you like, we saw you were in the leaderboard. <laughs> It got it got pretty loud. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a good time. That was a wild time. And, and and you, by the way, calming voice in the room. Well, I love how Ryan his his advice is like eat an edible. Well, eat an edible. no, first it was let's go for a walk. And I did. I went for a really long walk. Secondly, and tried to process everything. Let, let's calm ourselves down <laughs> with some medicine. By the way, not only was that on brand, but who knew that this was going to be perfect for the current promotion we have going with DraftKings. Well, Kramer, I I was <laughs> I foresaw the day where DraftKings would be back on as a sponsor, and I even threw in the promo code SGP. 
fitting because DraftKings, we're down to the final 22 teams in the NBA bubble and uh, DraftKings celebrating the return of basketball with not one, but two million dollar top prizes through the first two days of the resume season. All you got to do is download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code SGP to get a free shot at millions of dollars up for grabs this week with your first deposit. That's promo code SGP to get a free shot at millions of dollars with your first deposit only at DraftKings. I mean, millions of dollars. That could be you. That could be you filming that video. You could be owning yep. a Jeep Grand Cherokee, much <laughs> like I bought with my winnings. What are you going to do with the million dollars? It's a great problem to have. A lot of people come up to you and go, how much, how much do you have to pay taxes on that? Yes, you do, but it's still a million dollars. It's still going to be awesome. Yeah. Maybe Kramer, maybe Kramer will get to top me and uh, no, no, I'm just here at Kramer centric. If you need some calming influence as you're, as you're sweating, greatest, greatest swing man that you could ever ask for when you're pulling down a six figure winning, hopefully you have a Kramer in your life and hopefully you pull down a giant win this uh, coming week over at DraftKings.com. Use that app, grab that app, use that promo code SGP. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. We're going to get to our interview with Adam in just a second. I think it's worth mentioning if you're if you're new to the fantasy slang, GPP means guaranteed prize pool. Those are those are contests like the Millionaire Maker, where they guarantee that would be more of like your lottery ticket, right? You yeah. pay a little to win a lot versus cash games. Cash games, cash games are usually like, hey, everyone uh, throw in a hundred dollars, top fifty percent get win a hundred dollars. That's your minus one. Like so, basically, to 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 make the analogy to gambling, the GPP is your parlay. That's your fun parlay for the weekend. If you win, you're going to be super stoked. If you lose. Hopefully you've bet a reasonable amount of your 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 bankroll, maybe five percent tops. The cash games, that's your minus one ten. That's your minus one ten in the DFS, whether that's a 50-50, uh, whether that's just a heads up, maybe it's a three-man game. It, you're, you're you're essentially reducing that ridiculous risk of competing against thousands of people. Joining us on the line, co-founder of Establish the Run, Adam Levitan. Adam, appreciate you calling in, man. Hey, yeah! Thanks for having me. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah, just uh, football's almost football's back, so. here. We got our uh, establish the run package over here at the podcast, chomping away, getting ready to break down some some DFS, some daily fan. I mean, I don't know about you, but when August hits and we're almost in August, uh, my brain just switches into football mode. How excited are you for this season? I mean, all things aside, knock on wood, everything goes and and it's all right. How jacked up are you for the season? Yeah, I mean, the best sport. I don't think football is my favorite sport, but it's my favorite sport to play fantasy on and to bet on and to do props on and to play season long on. So, I, I mean, from that perspective, football is incredibly exciting. And I think there's something about football where the lead up is so great, and then you have a week between games. It's like, it, it just makes it so perfect. And you know, everybody has a take because there's so much time to get ready for each slate. So, so yeah, it, it's just by far the best sport. If you're into uh, quote unquote, speculating on sports. I yeah. like that. I like that speculating on sports. Well, I'm, we're going to have to steal that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. We're establishing a new financial market here. <laughs> uh, and I know, I, I mean, we're disappointed that there's no preseason. I, I think it's weird. Fans normally complain like, Oh, four preseason games. But we are at the the gambling podcast. We've been all over the fact that betting on the on the preseason market. It's it, it seemed like a great. It's been a great opportunity, especially like getting those early first game unders. And there's just it, if you really do your research in the preseason, it's a great time to kind of load up your kitty for the regular <laughs> season, where you're facing a much tougher, tighter marketplace. Uh, how disappointed are you that n- no preseason this year? Yeah. I I mean, any market that isn't as liquid as some of the other markets is going to be softer. And I really focused on DFS in preseason where, um, you know, it's it's more information based than anything else. I mean, if you know who is going to play three quarters, it's just a massive, massive edge. The thing is with preseason, it's a lot of work to know who's going to play three quarters and not a lot of people are, are up for that much work. So yeah, I mean, losing preseason, I think is bad from, you know, a few perspectives. I mean, number one, I, I love playing DFS. It's historically been 
one of the best ROI spots you can find for sure is preseason DFS. But second for the regular season, I, I think you actually learn a lot in the preseason about how coaches plan to use players in what formations, uh, how often who's ahead of who on the depth chart and, and all that stuff is really valuable. And, and you know, I, I, it's just so obvious, you know, if somebody's just a, a huge donkey, if they say the preseason doesn't matter, um, because if you know what to look for, I think it, it very much does. And the area I'm most excited for, I'm also a participant in the FFPC, like like you you guys are over there at the Establish the Run. And I think one of the most interesting things is to see how much preseason activity fluctuates drafts because we're playing for more money. People kind of just do what they want to do. And I'm I'm interested to see this year now with with the absence of those preseason games to see if there's a little bit more consistency around the draft or if it's even crazier. Cause now it's just based on beat reporters hearsay and like who's mm-hmm. getting the reps in practice. Yeah. So, so there's a big difference between beat writer speculation and reporting. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, who can't see the difference, you know, like a beat reporter might say something like, I, I think Ronald Jones, I think Ronald Jones is going <laughs> to start. And, and that means nothing. There's a big difference between, I think Ronald Jones is going to start and Ronald Jones got the first rep in practice nine out of the last 10 days. That that's, that's reporting. So uh, yeah, I think if you're able to distinguish between those two, that's a big thing. And yeah, preseason player performance to me is really meaningless, right? So like, I, I remember a long time ago, I think it was job at best broke <laughs> off like a 80 yard, like touchdown run and his ADP and season long went up by like three rounds based on one run. And obviously that's ridiculous. But if job at best got all of the reps, with the first team, that means something to me. If he breaks off one really long run and looks great, that shouldn't affect his status at all. It's funny. You've named Ronald Jones and Javad best in the same, yeah. in the same breath who both have been insane hype guys who just, you know, he's still waiting on best to do something. Yeah. I mean, it, it does seem like the, really the key to DFS in general or, or big key is clearly identifying volume. Like this guy is going to get a bunch of targets. This yeah. guy's going to get a bunch of carries. And if you can find that guy who's getting a bunch of volume at a low price, that's kind of how you, you really put a dent in these things. And the preseason is a great way to kind of identify some volume. What are you doing as far as uh, you know, when you're breaking down DFS, I mean, week one, looking at that slate, how are you going to factor in uh, just handicapping these rookies? I mean, I, I think there's going to be some scrimmages uh, that these teams do that are going to kind of mirror the preseason action because these coaches need to somehow simulate 11 on 11 just to figure out their depth chart. Do you have any sort of angle you're looking at already when it comes to handicapping the rookie class when it comes to DFS? Yeah, I think that the rookies are going to, uh, people are going to be more excited than they should be about rookies. I think that's going to be a, a pretty uh, popular take that'll be out there. But yeah, you mentioned about, you know, in DFS, the, what is most important by far, by far is opportunity. I think people get caught up in thinking talent and thinking, uh, all these other things matter, uh, guys, hip swivel or, or his size (laughs) or his speed. And, and if you can project who's going to get the ball the most, that's how you're going to win, uh, the most consistently. So yeah, I mean, we'll see on the rookies. I think that the, the standard take right now is that rookies are not going to be up to speed as much. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to be overvalued relative to Damian Williams and, and uh, DeAndre Swift's going to be overvalued relative to carry on Johnson, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, I think we'll just have to see how it goes and hopefully we'll learn something from those first two practices. But yeah, I think we're flying blind more than usual in DFS for week one. And, and if I see people overconfident in their takes, that could certainly skew ownership. Cause I think a lot of people are gonna be flying blind and, and really us more than, than ever will be flying blind in week one. Which creates massive opportunity for someone to sneak in and scoop up a cool million dollars. John. Exactly. <laughs> Bringing us to uh, Adam, you put out, you guys have a ton of content and uh, you know, can't recommend it enough subscribing to establish the run, well, get the draft quick, kit be, the, because I the don't, best ball stuff. I don't want to, I, I know like one of the big, I, I feel like you guy, you and Evan were on the forefront of some of this opportunity stuff over at Roto world. One of my favorite write-ups. And when you guys moved to do your own thing, I, I really enjoyed that kind of like fan, like that fantasy outlook, uh, but also the workload and target reports. Like that's a common thing now. And I think, yeah. you know, even just five, six years ago, you could gain a massive advantage looking at that opportunity cost of a player who's receiving a tremendous amount of targets, especially from a running back position. So I, I don't know if that was you or Evan, uh, but I feel like you guys were on the forefront of that. Uh, very excited. Sean mentioned, very excited about the new site. 
Uh, I was, I was, I was at first I was annoyed when you guys moved off because Roto World was just in my normal digest. But <laughs> yeah. I've now moved. I, I, I do like. Uh, I, I'm buying in. I'm fully bought into the new uh, site. Yeah. So, uh, what I wanted to ask is, we're we're also small small business over here. How what what, what kind of drove that decision to say, hey, we're going to go do our own thing? Yeah. Well, first of all, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys checking out the site for sure. Um, yeah, I think there's uh, at a high level like a changing way, uh, like we're in the middle of like a huge sea change in media where the middleman is no longer needed, right? So like I can go on WordPress and create a site very, very easily. I can go on YouTube. I can go on uh, a podcast and go direct to consumer very easily. Why do I need NBC or any other big company uh, to take a cut or to tell me what the ceiling is going to be or, or how much I'm going to make uh, if I can draw customers uh, or an audience to a certain platform. So I think we're just in the middle of that. And it sh- if, if people haven't realized that, I mean, I think it's staring people right in the face now. Um, the second thing is I would say like, we didn't just like, I, I feel like we were preparing for this and we didn't even know, but we were preparing to do this for like 10 years. Like I wouldn't recommend people just launching their own website with no audience whatsoever. I'm sure it can be done if you're really good at SEO and you have a really good product or, or, or whatever. Um, but we kind of had a built in audience over 10 15 years of doing this. So, so that was certainly an advantage for us and something that I thought that we should get to leverage, not, not another company. Right. And, and obviously it's like way riskier. Like you are going to realize your ceiling a lot more doing your own thing. Um, you're also don't have that built in floor. Like if the season's wiped out uh, you know, and you work at Rotor world, like you're still going to get paid. Like there, nothing yeah. is going to happen. If the season gets wiped out this year, you know, we make $0. And so that's just like the way life goes, you know? So um, there's definitely, you know, it, yeah. there's a lot to think about with it, but I, I think it, in the long run, it's going to make sense for people who at least can, can build an audience in the words of Bruce Arians, no risk it, no biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, instead of taking the 50, 50 cash game, yeah. you guys looked at it and go, Hey, we, we could be top 10 in a GPP contest. Let's why go. not, why not become our own uh, millionaire maker? And uh, that kind of transitions to this article that I, I checked out winning draft Kings uh, millionaire maker trends that you put out. This is really interesting because it's stuff that I had always thought in the back of my head, like, Hey, should I, I, I would always been a guy who would like do the stack, but you know, is that actually a good analytical uh, way to do it? And you went through and crunched the numbers of a bunch of uh, top 10 finishes. Just kind of walk us through your report here and what jumped out at you and, and what all went in uh, collecting the data for this article. Yeah, first of all, shout out to the guys at Fantasy Labs uh, for getting us the data. Basically, we looked at 452 teams, each of which finished in the top 10 in an NFL Millie Maker over the last three years. And just looking for common characteristics between them and then comparing that to what the field is doing. Because, like, you know, let's say that um, tight end in the flex. Uh, for whatever example, you know, uh, top 10 teams did it 20% of the time, but the field did it 50% of the time. Well, then it's actually a losing strategy, right? Because the field is actually doing it at a lower rate. So I think it's important to compare stuff to the field, which is a big part of what we added to the article this year. I also, I used to do this article, uh, where I would only look at the winning teams and that just resulted in a really small sample. Now, I think by looking at the top 10 teams, I mean, the top 10 teams are still so outrageously high in terms of finish, you know, 0.0001% of teams, and but you get a bigger sample. So that's how we got to 452 teams. Um, yeah, it's just a unique tournament, right? Like it, it, this is not like strategies I would, it, well, some of the strategies I would recommend for all GPPs. And I think you can learn a lot about all GPPs from reading it, but the Millie maker is so unique because such a huge portion of the prize pool goes to first place. And there's so many people in it. Like you have to do, you have to really like just have the perfect team uh, to win it. And that's obviously very hard. I think that a lot of the things that, that people are going to read and it's going to stick out is that people just like, aren't stacking enough. Like if you're not stacking, you're like almost drawing dead. And, and, um, it's because, uh, picking out the perfect player at every position for a nine man roster is extremely difficult. But if I can pick out the perfect quarterback for a slate, well, hell, then it's easy to pick out the, the wide receiver pool or the tight end pool or the running back pool, it's likely going to be one or one or two, or maybe even three of those guys in there. So, uh, you know, our Drew Dink Myers referred to it as kind of magnetic needles in a haystack. We're looking for needles in a haystack, but if they're magnetic, that's why stacking, uh, makes sense. So, you know, like zero, uh, a naked quarterback, in other words, a quarterback with none of his pass catchers only in the top 10% of the lineups 
uh, only in the top 10 line of 6.4% of the time, but in the, I'm sorry, the field 6.4%, top 10, 17.4%. So huge, huge edge there. I think the other thing that we've seen recently in DFS tournament play from a lot of the best guys is quarterback, pass catcher, pass catcher, and then an opponent on the other side. And so it can be um, a running back, can be a tight end, it can be an opposing wide receiver. You can also stack running back and wide receiver, but whatever it is, thinking about how the opponent correlates with your stack too. Hey, if in this game, Tom Brady and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans all go off, well, that game flow is going to lead to somebody on the opponent uh, getting a lot of work also. uh, And you have a chance for even more correlation there. So I think a lot of the top guys are almost exclusively making lineups that way. And it kind of showed in the data there as well. And the the guys who are like more gambling first, like that, that is an added edge because you can just simply look at the totals and you can just based on that say, Oh, you know, this is where I like my stack. And to your point, creating more opportunity. My t- big takeaway was, you know, I think a lot of times people say contrarian, contrarian, contrarian without actually knowing what contrarian either means or what it means in the context of what we're talking about. Oftentimes it's perception. And I, I, I found it very rewarding that one of the areas that I insist on never spending a penny being as contrarian as possible is defense special teams, because mm-hmm. there's so much variance. And that was one of your, one of your call outs. So I, I felt, I felt very uh, affirmed with that, but I, I really wanted to bring this back to the, the strategy of winning the millionaire maker. And candidly, Adam, what you don't know is, is Sean, Sean green over here. <laughs> he finished second place in a millionaire maker. Now uh, this is the longest by far we've ever talked about <laughs> DraftKings or the Millionaire Maker without him bringing it up. Well, I wanted wow. you know I wanted to kind of wait get well, but, get his article. But in not there. only did you did you leverage the stack strategy? Yes, I did. You also uh, I think played a contrarian defense that week. So a lot of the things that are called out in this statistical analysis of how to t- be successful was done in practice by Mr. Sean Green right here. Yes. And wow. uh yeah, and it was uh it was a crazy story. I'll just tell it for Adam. Yeah. The, the audience has heard it a million times, but yeah, I mean for the majority of the day I was sitting on a million dollars. All my guys were in the early game and then the afternoon I was going I was sitting there just like white knuckling it and uh Scott Tolzine threw his second pick 6 2017 week 1. <laughs> Scott Tolzine threw a second pick 6 against the Rams. And the guy behind me had Rams defense, so I got knocked down from oh, a God. first place. So Scott Tolzien owes me eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Been trying to track him down, Scott. I'm coming for you. But Sorry, yeah, I mean, I, a little I, bit of a tangent there. I, I did, I did, the, I did the stack where I had the uh, Carson Wentz, I had uh, Zach Ertz. Who, Zach Ertz was only thirty nine hundred dollars, and I remember that jumping out at me like, oh my God, that's easy money. And then I had the Eagles defense. Who got a defensive touchdown? I mean, you could argue they reviewed the play. It was like cl- it was close to being the you know like should it be a fumble? Shouldn't it? Should it be an incomplete pass? So really had to sweat that out there and uh, lucky because I mean you look at how you uh, you know to cash in that top ten any sort of like one drop uh, you know even like a, a catch or a whether tenth it's of ruled, a point can matter. Yeah, yeah, I mean really you can go from two hundred thousand to two thousand pretty easily when they rule a you know, a, a bubble screen is a run instead of a catch. So a lot to, uh, a lot to kind of what factor I, in. What I did want to ask was more of a direct, like less macro question around um, the running back position in general. Cause it's something that we kind of have fun with every week when we pick our lineups uh, with the, with the notion that like your stud running backs are your giant escalades that you're backing into your garage. But from a strategy perspective, it, it, it's like I've had great success just punting running back and playing more of the cheaper PPR cheat code guys. Like from from your angle, when you're doing the prep for this stuff, do you find yourself gravitating more towards those lower cost, you know, higher opportunity through the passing game running backs, or are you looking more for those like super high floor bell cow? Like I'm going to spend up for these guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I think typically you want running backs who pass catches at or catch passes at, at all costs, no, no matter what that said, I I think that I know, as I showed in the article, running back is the most projectable, right? Like ownership correlates to production at the running back position more than any other position. Like people uh, aren't missing as much a running back because it's just easier to project running backs than any other position. We are pretty sure who's going to get the volume on a week to week basis and they get the more, more touchdowns, et cetera. Um, you know, in terms of going off the board at running back, I don't think that's necessarily the the optimal way to do it. Like I wouldn't go out of my way to be contrarian at running back, but if you think you have a good read on a guy and he's going to see five, six, seven targets 
in, in a game. Um, obviously, a target is worth almost three times as many expected value points as a carry. And so, you know, those guys are going to, if you can project a lot of targets, they're going to project uh, fine. It's just, you know, if you, if a running back projects for seven targets and 12 carries, like he's and he's cheap, he's going to be really owned. If he wasn't going to be owned, I, I'd be worried that um, yeah. I'm missing something, you know? Well, yeah. And, and I mean, you got a bunch of helpful tips here in the article, but when you're actually creating a, a lineup for the millionaire maker, do you start with your stack and then kind of build around it? Or do you just, do you start at a blank slate and just see who jumps out at you? What do you, what do you actually do? Because obviously salary is a big part of this as well. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, if, when I play the million maker and I don't play it every week, I more concentrate on cash and some of the smaller field, uh, higher stakes stuff, I think has better ROI uh, for me personally. But I, you know, if I was, when I do play the million maker, I would be making more than one lineup for sure. So if I had 20 lineups, I would just say, I want three Deshaun Watson, Brandon cook stacks and go from there. And I want three Carson Wentz, Jalen Rieger stacks and go from there um, and then kind of build in. So yeah, I would start from a stack down perspective while also keeping in mind average cumulative ownership. So if I think that, um, you know, Brady to Godwin stacks are going to be really popular. Well, I need to know, I know I need to go off the board a little bit more at my other one. And then I would kind of use projected ownership to figure out what the, the total cumulative ownership I think uh, will be. And then I would try to get more correlation in there. You know, I didn't talk about running back defense uh, correlation in this article, but that's shown to have some positive correlation between your running back and your defense and, and the bring it back stuff I would include also uh, and bring it back is just what I was talking about before with the opponents. So, so yeah, it's answer your question. I think multiple lineups, thinking about what stacks you want to include in your pool and going from there makes sense. Yeah. And one of the, one of the calls you have here is typically stay under a hundred and twenty percent cumulative ownership for people who are you know maybe not as savvy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Explain what that means and kind of the easiest way to come about finding ownership info and 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I mean, after the slate locks and everything is publicly available, it's easy, right? Just add up all of the ownership percentages in your lineup and see what you come up with. If you have nine guys at 20%, well, that's 180%. That's way, way, way too high. You know, only 1.5% of teams in the top 10 ever had more than 175% cumulative ownership. Um, I think a lot of lineups in the million maker, especially from kind of new players or whatever, uh, have way too much cumulative ownership. And so you want to stay, you know, somewhere under 120, you know, 75, 80, 90 to 120, I think, uh, is kind of the sweet spot where you're not too far off the board and you're not too chalky. Um, the way to figure it out before the slate, well, that's hard. I do uh, ownership projections and I start on them on Wednesday and I spend a ton of time on Wednesday doing them. I update them on Friday after the injury report and then I update them again on Sunday for late news. I, I think, and we, you know, we've back tested them and I think they're really good. They're far from perfect. But I think if you use those or some other ownership projections that you trust, uh, you can add up the uh, projected ownership in your lineup and see what it comes up to. Yeah. I mean, I think the big takeaway is make sure you have data sources that, that you can use. I think there's a lot of people out there, you know, selling snake oil. And then I think there's a lot of people selling, selling processes that can, can get you paid. And I think data is the big one. You, well, you need the data. If you don't have the data, you're just guessing. Well, yeah. And and that's something that's appealing about, uh, you know, the establish the run.com setup. They have a little thing in there about section where Hey, we don't sell picks. We don't sell oh, lineups. Sounds a lot like us. Sean. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of our mindset. It makes sense to buy, you know, information. Like basically you're purchasing all the research time that yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. So no, I'm willing exactly. to get- <laughs> <laughs> I don't got that time, but it, it's cool to have a source like this. And if you have a bunch of those sources, you can kind of take a look at the information use it to your best ability. And at the end of the day, a little gut instinct never hurt. And we keep talking about the name of the site established the run. I just wanted to ask a very pointed <laughs> question. You guys are trolling my GM, Dave Gettleman, correct? <laughs> We're just trolling all football guys in general, yeah, yeah. all the old school football <laughs> guys uh, in general, you know, and we thought we had a hard time coming up with the name, you know, it's, it's kind of a big decision. And so yeah. when, when it came up, we thought that uh, uh, it was good because, you know, we like to troll the old school football guys and you know, if you get on a run in, in fantasy, you know, that that's, that's a good thing too. So we thought it had a little bit of a double edge thing there. I, I, like, I, like, I like, like the double meaning there. Well, we're, t- yeah. I mean, while we're here week one, I know it's uh, what 50 days away or whatever, and a lot's going to change. We have a lot to figure out. Is there any sort of week one early stacks 
that you kind of have your eye on that you're looking at. I, I know it's far out and, and a lot can happen between now and then, but are there any sort of week one stacks that are already piquing your interest? Man, you know, I, I haven't looked too much and I usually start to look uh, once we have pricing, but I, you know, and things that I normally try to look at are teams who I think defenses are overvalued by the public. And, you know, we had news today that Eddie Goldman is going to sit uh, out due to Corona for the bears. I think that the lions host them in week one. And, you know, last year when Matthew Stafford was healthy, this was legit. One of the best offenses in the league. Matthew Stafford was on pace to be fantasy's quarterback too, behind only Lamar Jackson when he got hurt last year. The splits with Marvin Jones on and off the field are, are really strong. And I think TJ Hawkinson can make a leap and we'll see how much DeAndre Swift can play, but he plays real well in the past game. And obviously I like Kenny Gallagher. So that was one that kind of stuck out bears, maybe an overrated defense. And I think lions on the other side, underrated uh, pass game. Oh, I love that, Sean. It lines up nicely with my taking the over on the Stafford props. Uh, cited a very similar thing. He's I, I love him week one. I will one hundred percent have a Stafford stack because he's going to be underpriced. I can't imagine a world where he's priced appropriately or over. Yeah, you don't see the public coming in, and we'll see who ends up becoming the starter in Miami. I, it, it's going to be shocking to me if they don't start Ryan Fitzpatrick at least one mm-hmm. week one, and he's going back to new England, which normally you think like, Oh, that's not a great matchup. But the last time he was in new England, their last game of their season, he threw for 320 yards, only one passing touchdown. And he had Devontae Parker go for eight and one thirty seven. So even though they have a bad offensive line, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Miami and that Fitzpatrick Parker stack does, doesn't do some damage week one. No, look at you. I'm yeah. we're way too prepared for football. <laughs> yeah. A lot of opt outs on the Patriots defense. I yeah. mean, you know, I, 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 it, it scares me a little bit, but the Ryan Fitzpatrick is the kind of player that you want to play in these kind of tournaments where he doesn't care about throwing interception. He <laughs> yeah. doesn't care about throwing into double coverage. And you know, when things break right for him, I mean, he literally can go for like 360 yards and three touchdowns. And so, um, yeah, it's not the worst idea I've heard, especially with the opt outs. Yeah. And I would never root for a player's injury. I mean, unless they're on the Cowboys, but for the most part, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not for rooting for players injuries. However, it would be awesome. I think as DFS players, fantasy players, we're just chomping at the bit to see uh, Jameis Winston in new Orleans with that offense, because he is the ultimate don't give a fuck quarterback. Who's just going to throw it up. And I think we're kind of robbed right now when he's, you know, sitting behind drew Brees and, and his path to, to starting is, is going to be a long shot. Yeah. I, I mean the saints offense, I think people have it twisted that the saints have some like explosive offense. I mean, I think the way the saints win is through extremely short passing. I mean, Drew Brees only had two completions last year of 30 yards or more. I mean, it, it's through extremely short passing. And I think their defense is underrated and, and the league's best offensive line and a really capable uh, run game, particularly when Alvin Kamara is healthy. So yeah, I think people are a bit confused and yeah, I, I would not be on uh, saints stacks in week one, I think it'll be over owned. And also because the bucks, uh, defense quietly is, you know, really, really good and really, really talented. And, and people just don't understand because last year, Jameis, uh, put them in so many bad situations, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, constant bad situations and, and shootouts and ugly, uh, spots, but with Tom Brady kind of selling things down and not turning the ball over, I think we'll see the bucks defense play really well this year. Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to project that Tom Brady's not going to throw 30 interceptions this season mm-hmm. and six pick yeah. sixes. <laughs> that was pretty awesome that he ended the uh, season on a pick six. Oh, it was man. just, it was really, I mean, it's one fitting. for the ages. It's and, fitting. you know, watching like four or five games at a time, it seemed like every week we had the Bucks on simply because of the excitement factor or just having Jameis in fantasy or DFS. Like, there was no way you didn't have. A Tampa Bay uh, player that you were kind of keeping an eye on. Now, as a guy who plays a, a bunch of lineups and stuff like that, what is your what is your Sunday routine as far as watching? Like, what's your setup? Yeah, so um, it's not great because I usually leave uh, my house on on Sunday because I got two young kids here, and so it's a total zoo. So I'm looking at concert. I have an office uh, a few blocks away that I go to, but the screen setup there is not great. I usually just have two computers, uh, one with Red Zone and one with a game that. I'm watching. And then I'll also have, you know, usually like my highest stakes uh, head to head. I'll have up on there to, to sweat uh, as <laughs> nice. well until and, t- and tilt about. And and so, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I don't have a, a really great setup to be honest. 
Well, I mean, it's all the same. It sounds like you're sweat. <laughs> it sounds like you're sweating action. Yeah, sounds as long like as you're flipping you're, around. As long as you're getting a sweat, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could be sweating it out. I've yeah. sweat out many a game on GameCast, just refreshing that thing well, until <laughs> until I, I see a missed field goal. I wanted to ask though, like as someone who who plays a lot of DFS, like it, it, do you also dabble heavily in the prop market, leveraging that same data set? Yeah, I, I want to. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, books are never going to let you beat them on on props. You know, uh, I think a couple years ago when FanDuel first came to Pennsylvania, they let me bet whatever I wanted um, on props for about one week. Uh-huh. Uh, I was getting like four figures on props, and then the next week, I mean, I don't even know if I won, but the next week I was down to I think twelve dollars as a max on wow. on any props, and so. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's just, I don't blame them. Like they use props, I think is more a marketing thing. Now, if you have like a small bankroll um, and you want to bet 50 or 20 or whatever, you can probably, I think you can generate, you know, uh, 15, 20, 25% ROI in the, in the NFL player prop market. You just don't want to get your account flagged. And, you know, you could do that by a lot of different ways, betting a lot uh, on something, uh, betting, WNBA, uh, you know, bet, doing, doing stuff like that to get your account uh, flagged, I think. Uh, but if you know what you're doing and, and you know not how to get five and you're willing to kind of grind it out for small stakes, I think that prop market is one of the most beatable prop markets in all of sports speculation. It is funny that betting the WNBA is a red flag. Well, like, no <laughs> way, no way. This is just a casual fan. Enjoy. This has got to be. He's working for a syndicate. We got to keep an eye on this guy betting the WNBA. No, they, we always talk about it like un, unregulated market, unsharp markets. Whether it's super small college and WA NBA has been good for that. I mean, one of our best runs as a podcast recently was just pounding XFL unders, especially early until they yeah. adjusted the line down because. It, these offenses just took a while to figure things out and, and there wasn't enough sharp money in there to, to move the number down. So yeah, finding, finding little niches like that is, is definitely a great way to, to make some, make some cash and uh, establish the run. You guys are launching a basketball product as well. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited because I mean, you know, we'll see on the NFL, but NBA, I think this bubble is going to work. So I'm really glad that we're getting this NBA product off the ground. Uh, you know, I think that Drew Dinkmeyer uh, is by far the best NBA fantasy player I have ever met and come across and one of the biggest winners in the history of DFS for sure. So, so glad to have him on board. And and yeah, the NBA uh, is more rewarding, I think, uh, to people who are good and work hard at DFS because like there's no flukes, like there's no like the ball bounces off a guy's helmet and it goes for a 90 yard touchdown yeah. and somebody wins wins all the money. Like in the NBA, it's like so many iterations of every possession, you know, hundred possessions a game. And so uh, it's not like this big event home run or 80 yard touchdown. So you're able to smooth out variance a lot more. And so I think people who are trying hard and, and working hard and understand NBA DFS are more likely to be rewarded uh, and don't have the same kind of peaks and valleys. And, you know, obviously the peaks and valleys of the NFL are great fun. As I talked about at the top, if you're really trying to grind though, I think uh, small iteration sports probably make more sense. And basketball, like even more so than baseball, it, it's the perfect sample size when you look at a season. It's also the perfect, as you pointed out, the possessions in a game allow it to be the perfect sample size for most things to kind of regress. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm excited to to get back in. We we were just talking NBA DFS. It's it, it's uh it's it's a nice insurance policy against uh, whatever kind of weirdness might happen over the next couple of months for NFL. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. worry about Scott Tolzien throwing two <laughs> pick sixes in an NBA game and destroying your chance of being a millionaire. Well, Adam, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you give Adam a follow on Twitter at Adam Leviton and uh, check out the establish the run podcast, establish the run.com and uh, anything else you want to throw out there. No, I, I'm just, I was just going to say that this NBA schedule is great too, where they're playing games at like two o'clock. I mean, this is what I'm here oh, for. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Talk about a good way to spend the rest of the summer live wagering and DFS on NBA. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Doesn't get any better. Adam, appreciate the time, man. All right. No problem. Have a good one guys. Take it easy. Oh yeah. Sports are back, baby. NBA kicking off this weekend. Perfect time to start your own sports book over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. Use that link, aceperhead.com slash SGP. You get up to six weeks free. They'll set you up. 
all inclusive professional betting site. All the lines updated the second wagers graded immediately. Plus ACE offers live betting and an amazing mobile experience. You can get that all over at aceburhead.com slash S G P exciting times Kramer. Cause NBA is coming back. We just launched our new NBA gambling podcast feed. We're going to put some of our NBA gambling episodes over there. And then Ryan rich fat baby McKee is going to be putting out a daily podcast. So he's going to be animal, the man inside the bubble, cranking out DFS lineups, player props, picks, all that kind of stuff. And if you're looking for that feed, it, it's actually, uh, we, it, it, by the time you're hearing this, maybe it's up on iTunes already. It's well, already. Ryan, I, I just sent you this, oh, afforded you this email. It's been approved. Boom. So it should be up there in the iTunes. Give that a subscribe. And not only that's happening, a uh, Premier League, which I, I'm being told is soccer, Champions League. Sean. Oh, Champions Premier League, League just ended. Okay, we, we right now, uh, uh, as you're listening to this, there is a FA Cup preview for this weekend, done by Billy Bahate. The, the end of the EPL, and then we're moving right into Champions League. And uh, much like we did uh, in seasons past uh, for the World Cup, because this year's Champions League is a knockout style tournament, I'm thinking. I'm hearing we're going to be doing some daily shows on that front as well. So shitloads of content coming for August because of course the title, the title of this, the, 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 the big bang part of August is that we are hitting the NFL preview road starting next week, Sean, starting next week. We're yeah, going NFL off previews the, are coming. We're going off the grid to refresh. Yes. I'm bringing some, some documentation to read. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. Kramer's going to print out a lot of stuff for us to read. I'm going to carry pounds of paperwork to take (laughs) on my backpacking trip and burn once I'm out there doing some data analysis. And then we're going to come back charged up, ready to go hitting the uh, 2020 NFL preseason, hitting it running. And then uh, even we even have a third podcast scheduled for this week with a former NFL player, current NFL analysis or analysts. So uh, stay tuned there. Stay subscribed to the podcast. Spread the word. Give us those five star ratings and reviews. Those are what those are what we crave. We give you all this content, yeah. all these free giveaways, cash prizes, merch, doing all that stuff. And all we ask is a simple is your time to just simply take a moment. You listen to this podcast, you enjoyed it. Just head over to the uh, the old iTunes, Apple Podcasts, give it that five star, and just write, "Hey, podcast, awesome." Whatever it is. Always appreciate that. That helps us climb the charts and conquer nice. the sports gambling conquer. world. I like that word. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. And for the sports gambling podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Now this season, it's my year to get the millionaire. Kramer, let it ride.